Just waiting for it to, to kick off. Man. Is that a gaming chair behind you over your right shoulder? Yeah, that's that's um one of my wife's sponsors. Nice. They they, they took care of her with that. So you got nice. she got a, she got her own setup. So she said if I got if I'm gonna have my section, she's like I gotta have my own too. I heard I'm like, that. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's cool. Is that her screen? She got her own screen too. She got two of them. She Dang. got two of them. She got a whole. Uh, uh, let me let me get this out the way. Wifey is hooked up. She got her own pop. She got her own home pop filter. She got her own custom, uh, her own custom mic and everything like that. Oh, she got a pink chair. That's that's cool. And it's like I'm like, can I have? She's like, half of that's mine. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love that. Oh man. Ah. Uh, so, so uh, I, I guess let's go ahead and do it. So, yes, welcome sir. everyone to Hawaii's number one podcast, the Casanova Podcast. I'm your host, Mikhail Casanova. I've got the honor and the privilege of having the one, the only, the iconic and legendary John <laughs> Eric Bentley. How's it going, man? I'm good, man, but I'm just John Eric Bentley. I ain't all that. I'm just, you know, <laughs> but I appreciate it, man. I'm doing good. How about you? Man, I'm I'm doing good, staying home, staying safe. Please do. Um, Man, it's it's crazy times right now. <laughs> you ain't got to tell me, man. It's like <laughs> you go outside, it's like rolling dice, and you hope you don't land on seven. Right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's like, what's that in the air? I don't know. I hope it's bugs. <laughs> <laughs> it's flying at me. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. Bro, we, we were uh, – so, so for the audience, y'all didn't know, we, we were chopping it up before we, we, we started this. And, man, uh, dude, I love your energy. I love your charisma. Oh, I appreciate it, man. <laughs> I learned that from Robin Williams. Oh, word. Yeah, I I, I, I used – well, I grew up watching Mork and Mindy. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, as you get older, uh, you find out how much stuff the man has done. And yeah. then I was just talking about my uh, talking about him to my boys uh, last night, actually. Mm -hmm. And then um, you start – the access to the Internet allows you to see some of his stand-up that he used to do. But then mm -hmm. I did a show with him right before he, he – you know, left this earth, um, called the crazy ones. And even at his age and even as, uh, you know, what was going on, he just brought this energy to the room that, and we were outside <laughs> mm -hmm. that just, uh, was full of, full of joy. He just, um, kind of inspired joy in people. So, uh, he's one of the people that I just admire. And I just, you know, hope, th hope that I can do the same to bring happiness to people, especially during times like this, but yeah. usually anytime anytime um because yeah. we just don't have enough of it in the world in my opinion no we really don't and you know <clears throat> one of the things like I, I try to tell a lot of people you know from my nieces and nephews and family to other folks is like i mean we don't know how much time we got here we need to make the most of it exactly you know, try to help I, I i'm a huge believer in paying it forward and helping other folks out because yep. you just never know man you know if you got yep. the opportunity to help someone why wouldn't you? You know what I mean? Why wouldn't you? If you're in a position to help someone, to bless somebody, to uh, bring a smile on their face, why wouldn't you? You know what I mean? You know, that's what I always say. Um, uh, my, my prayer in the morning is, hey, help me touch somebody today. Uh, mm -hmm. It's different now uh, because, you know, we're, we're quarantined. But as far as the physical part of it, meeting someone or going out, but even with the voice, whatever it can be. Help me to bless somebody today. Help me to touch someone's heart today and uplift and edify them. Because I think that's what we're called to do as human beings. We just don't have enough yeah. of it going around, you know. No. So that's me. No, I, I fully agree with you, man. But at the same time, we still got to, you know. Right now. <laughs> right now, if I'm out, I'm going to give somebody the elbow. Like, hey, what's up, dog? <laughs> you know, I can't, I can't hug like I used to. But, you know, I, I always say, though, these things too shall pass. Uh, I don't yeah. know when. Uh, but I, I do hope that, you know, um, we, we save a lot more than we're losing, um, uh, yeah. both, both physically, mentally, and spiritually. I hope, I hope that, uh, you know, I hope a lot of people are safe and, and doing well, but as far as whatever I can do, I just want to try to remain healthy so that I can minister to my family, uh, take mm -hmm. care of them and then, you know, bring joy to whoever I can in this world. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so with that being said, man, if we. Go ahead, introduce yourself, man. Tell people 
Well, you know, we we as as we know, man, you are the the infamous. Barrett Wallace and Final Fantasy VII Remake, but you've done so much in your illustrious career, man. So go ahead and tell people where they can find you, you know, plug all your outlets, any upcoming ventures. I understand NDAs, you know, I know you're working on many projects all the time, but whatever you can share, go ahead. Yeah, on the real, man, <clears throat> you're going to laugh at me and probably everybody who hears this. I'm just getting up to par with social media. So I literally have to pull this out to figure out what my handles are. I, I only know. <laughs> Everybody's like, hey, man, you need to be on Instagram. Hey, man. And my son's like, hey, you need to forget about, forget, forget about Facebook. You need to be on the gram. And I'm like, what? And they're like, dad, you need to, you need to go ahead and do the Twitter. I'm like, tweet? I don't get it. And so they're like, oh, man, you need to understand what Zoom is. You need to know how to do Skype. You need it. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, man, forget y'all. Y'all young. And then all of a sudden, this, <laughs> and the world is like, you can't come in here and do voiceovers anymore. You have to now have your own booth. So I'm like, oh, I know I need to Twitter. I need to Skype. I need to Zoom. I need, <laughs> you know, so they were all right. And, uh, you know, I guess you can find me on Twitter mm -hmm. under John Bentley or John Eric Bentley. Or at, is it at? It's, it's Twitter, and then the other one is the pound sign thing, and I I think that one's Instagram, and I think that's John Bentley or John Eric Bentley, my name. Uh, and then, um, what is the other stuff? I'm what? grabbing it all right now for the audience. Yeah, yeah, you get it, man. Because I don't, <laughs> man. I'm horrible at it. I know I'm supposed to be plugging myself and all that, but I'm just like, do the work. Babies get to eat. Wife is happy. <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, I, I understand, man. It's it's hard to it it because I okay. So you know, you and I we come we came up in the age of before social media and all this other stuff. It is crazy. Yeah, I think you got people that that live their whole lives like yeah. through through a phone. Yeah, you, you know? know the craziest part, Kale. The craziest part is if you want to work in the business of entertainment. You yeah. have to be plugged in and you have to have followers. Mm -hmm. If you don't have followers, people are like, okay, well, if we know he did a great job at the audition, but if we hire him, how many people are going to watch our show? This yep. guy over here sucked at the audition, but he's got 950,000 followers. So we need to hire him. He'll, they'll watch the show. Yeah. And it's like, oh, so that changes the game. It's no longer about just talent sometimes. Mm -hmm. Or no longer about just getting hired because of your work ethic or because of your personality <laughs> or because you can do the damn job. It's, it's about <laughs> getting hired because everybody else is going to now pay attention to whatever that brand is or whatever that it's yeah. It's a trip. It's a different world we live in. Yeah, it, in some cases, in some cases. It, you know, another thing, too, is like, you know, because I, I deal with that a lot, too, with what I do. Like, I was telling you before we, we started this, like, I, you know, I work with various game companies, and, you know, I do this podcast and whatnot, and it's it's trippy when it comes to trying to work with different companies. Like, you know, some folks are like, how many how many followers you got? How many subscribers you got right, on YouTube? Right. How many folks you got on Twitter? And blah, right. Oh, you're small. You don't have enough. And I'm over here like, What do I do? <laughs> My hands are tied. <laughs> no, it's serious. I'm, have you had this yet? Well, who have you interviewed? Yes. Well, who have your guests been? Yes. You know, not just from those people who want to subscribe or the people who listen, but from the people who you're like, hey, you, can we do an interview? Well, yes. Who's been on your show? <laughs> Man, come on, bro. Bro, I, I've gotten I've gotten so many people turn me down like just just within like the last couple of months because they're like, well, I don't know if you know you haven't interviewed anyone of this status, and I'm like, yo, I'm just I'm like, look, first off, I'm in Hawaii. You might want to come out here to Hawaii, <laughs> right? Come on, right. Now. This come perks on. to this, <laughs> <laughs> right? No, I, you know, like I said, man, um, don't get me wrong, people do have to vet you know, the people that yeah. they're going to spend time with. But when you go back and see the work, which like my agents were like, Hey, you need to check this guy out. I'm like, okay. And so of <laughs> course you, you have your podcast, you have everything there where we can see it. I'm like, Oh, this is first class. He's doing his thing. You know, of <laughs> course I'll do it. But I told them, as a matter of fact, I said, Hey, um, 
I want to do the show, but does he want to do the show before the, the, the release date yeah. or after so we can actually talk about more stuff? Mm-hmm. You know, because if we would have done it before, it's like, okay, I'm going to tell you the audition process. Later. <laughs> NDA. Got to go. Yep. yep. <laughs> you know, but now, you know, it's out there and we can talk about certain things. No, because I, I went through that with, um, I interviewed uh, <laughs> Nicole Tompkins from Resident Evil 3 Remake. And s- same thing when I was dealing with her agents, they're like, you want to do it before or after? And I'm like, um... Give me the Choose wisely. <laughs> Choose wisely, like, young Jedi. It's, it's like it's in the balance. Which right. One you want to go with. And then, right. They're like, well, do you want to have your typical iconic conversations or are you just, you know, organic and whatnot? Or do you want yes and no? Yeah. I'll wait. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Patience is a virtue in that innocent instance, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, that's that's very true. That's very true. You have to be wise with it. That's yep. funny. Yeah. So, um, dude, let's get, get a, a brief background about yourself. And, you know, not only as an actor, but as a voice actor as well. You, you've got a story career, man. Let's talk about it. <laughs> um, let's talk about it. I, I, you know, I, um, I'll start from the beginning, but yeah. I, I, I'm, I guess I'm a little different. I don't, uh, <clears throat> everyone's like, well, t- I'll never forget. Somebody say, Hey man, tell me about yourself. What have you done? Like a friend, even a friend. <laughs> hey, what's the last thing you worked on? What you working on now? I'm like, I don't remember because I'm just <laughs> I'm just trying to feed feed family, bro. I'm yeah. uh, you know I got mouths to feed, so I go from job to job to job. I don't keep up with my stuff like stats because mm-hmm. um, the overall purpose, and it's not about me like tripping or anything or false humility or anything. I just you know work is work. You know what I mean. Yeah. I can remember it if I did it like last week or <laughs> you know <laughs> yesterday, but for the most part. People always say, what have you done? And I always feel like if I start talking, I feel like I'm bragging. You know, it's just me. It's just how I was brought up. Uh, But as we were talking before, mom and dad from the South. And, you know, Mm -hmm. I just just so I always say, hey, look up IMDB. Then you can see Mm -hmm. my work. And then people were like, oh, you you, you all. I'm like, yeah, I, I just don't. I'm not trying to be all that. I just it's a lot, you know. So when I started off. My mom was a school teacher. My Mm -hmm. dad worked for the steel mill in Chicago. My mom's from Nashville. Mm -hmm. Uh, My dad is from um, Alabama, Mm -hmm. Decatur, Alabama, and uh, Muffinsburg and and Tennessee, and then Nashville Mm -hmm. is where she basically grew up. Mm -hmm. So my mom was a school teacher and educator, and um, all of my uncles and aunts um, were, uh, they dealt with uh, SNCC and and, all the the different Mm -hmm. things that were going on during the civil rights movement. I am adopted. So I was adopted in Chicago mm-hmm. or, or Evanston, Illinois. Uh, mm-hmm. I recently just found out, you know, a bunch of information about all that. And then my mom passed in 96. My dad mm-hmm. just passed in 2017. So I'm giving you all that background to give you this. Oh, man, my mom taught this. me how to read at, I think, the age of five. So by mm-hmm. the time I was eight, um, I had already read like the Iliad the odyssey you know all these different things yeah. greek mythology was my thing and i'll never forget my mom was like i said hey where's the next one what's gonna happen next and she was like that, that's it baby there's no more it's greek and roman mythology i'm like there's got to be another one next week because i read comic books mm-hmm. right she's like no honey that's it so i was like these are great stories how come there's no more and then i found out campbell wrote volumes of different you know mythology and everything that was um uh from every culture you know, mm-hmm. and so I'm like, oh, this is great. But I didn't discover that until college. So my mom taught me to read at five because uh, she used to always say anything you want to know, you can go and look it up. Mm-hmm. She had two sets of encyclopedia, encyclo- uh, encyclopedias, mm-hmm. five dictionaries sitting around the house. <laughs> anything <laughs> I wanted to know, she like, you go look it up. And I never realized she's just teaching me how to read, teaching mm-hmm. me how to grow up and be mature yeah. and do the research on my own as opposed to getting it. Uh, from someone else Mm -hmm. so she taught me how to read and because of that my uh kindergarten graduation they did this big ceremony and they said hey can you can someone do the dr martin luther king speech Mm -hmm. and i'm like oh you mean i have a dream and they're like how do you know that i'm like well my mom and my dad and you know i gave the background well my school at that time happened to be on the west side of chicago in the midst of 
like where all the riots had taken place. Mm -hmm. um, people were looting and burning things down when King had been assassinated. Mm -hmm. um, that, that was before me. I was I was born in 69. Mm -hmm. But um, she said, uh, you can do this. And I'm like, what are you talking about? They want me to memorize all this. I can't. She's like, I'll help you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. So we did it. Fifth, I mean, yeah, I'm, I think I was five in kindergarten, six, six maybe. And mm -hmm. um, I got up to do this thing. Kel, it was like the audience, the moms and the dads and the teachers, the way they responded was so <clears throat> powerful to me as a kid because mm -hmm. they either cried or they wept. And I mean, wept, not just mm -hmm. cry, I mean, wept. Or they mm -hmm. cheered or they were happy and the kids were like, oh, this is great. And um, I didn't realize the power in theater that you can move someone with a voice or you can mm -hmm. move someone with something that they were familiar to uh, uh, with that <clears throat> brought joy or brought mm -hmm. happiness or brought peace. So I was like, this is great. This is awesome. So that was at that young age. <clears throat> After that, sports, 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 football, basketball, track, everything else, just sports. And then I came back to um, theater basically in high school and mm -hmm. um, informative speaking or declarative speaking and all that. I'm like, oh, this is great. I forgot. You can move a crowd. You know, you can. And so that that's what was cool for me. And that's how my background came up with acting and, and doing voice work and everything else. And then someone told me when I got to L.A., uh, I went to school for speech english and theater is where i got my undergrad i mm -hmm. got my um graduate uh, uh my master's in theater mm -hmm. uh i had a football scholarship at the university of minnesota so i played football and then got my undergrad and then someone said hey you know you can get another uh scholarship i'm like really free school and they're like yeah in theater all you have to do is audition and i did the audition mm -hmm. uh for the urdas urban urban repertory theater uh mm -hmm. so i did that uh, got chosen by more schools to get a scholarship than I did for football. So I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, I should have been doing this a long time ago. <laughs> so uh wound up staying at the University of Minnesota because uh, the Guthrie was there. I'd already mm -hmm. been established. I was doing voiceover stuff with Nuts, with Jan Hilton, who ran uh, non-union talent service. Uh, so uh, all these different things were happening. I'm giving you more of a background. I think even my wife knows. So, <laughs> so um, I did all that and then wound up staying at the University of Minnesota, wound up graduating uh, from the University of Minnesota's master program. It was an uphill thing. That's a whole different podcast we'll talk about because I'm trying to bring joy. And, and, um, <laughs> and then uh, we did that and then I uh, wound up staying there and then got married in 96. And I said, honey, you know, I'm from Chicago. We've done Chicago. Um, we're in Minneapolis and it's got a huge theater thing going. Uh, let's try. And I've been to New York. I didn't dig New York. In New York uh, during that whole uh audition process to get mm -hmm. to college and everything i went back and auditioned for some soap opera stuff while i was in the auditioning well, i got a phone call that my mom was sick and she passed mm -hmm. and so i my my relationship with new york is just oh my gosh my mom died and i was just i remember walking all of manhattan in the rain and walking when the two towers were still up mm -hmm. and i have no clue how i knew where i was going or how i got back to the hotel that i was staying at um, it was just those memories just hit me from New York. So, but I went mm -hmm. out to New York. I've done work in New York. Uh, it's just that I was like, I don't know if I want to stay here because those memories come up, you yeah, know. Yeah. And um, long story short, again, I say that. Um, dude, wound up saying, tell "Hey, the story. yeah, yeah." I was <laughs> like, "Hey, hon, let's let's see what LA is like. Mm -hmm. Let's go out there." We had just gotten married, uh, and I said, "Let's go out there." So we had, I think, a thirteen or fourteen day. Uh, round trip, we uh, just a ticket to see what it's like. We're gonna stay with friends in Ontario, mm -hmm. and Ontario, I didn't know it was that far from LA, so it's a trek. <laughs> so, uh, but it, it was worth it to me because I, you know, I'm always about the hustle, I'm always about the work. Mm -hmm. So, my wife said, Okay, I'm gonna go home. We had just bought a house, we had just gotten married, she had just gotten a beauty salon. Um, I just we we're just able to get her a car. Uh, mm -hmm. so all this stuff we're leaving, you know, I'm like, Oh my gosh. I'm out here trying to, okay, that's a heck of a why. That's my ride or die. So um, mm -hmm. we wound up after 14 days, 
I'm like, all right, I got cast in a in a show. Mm-hmm. Uh, Abdul Razak cast me in a show, and he's no longer with us. He uh, he cast me in a show, and we did a two two. Sh- I was an understudy, mm-hmm. and then one guy didn't show up, and I wound up going on. And then shortly afterwards, I got a call from. I had sent all my stuff out prior to leaving to mm-hmm. see if uh, I could get a bite, a casting director, something. Mm-hmm. Cause LA's big and yeah, um, yeah. Monica Busy. Swan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Monica Swan, bless her heart. Uh, she was a casting director for sister, sister amongst mm-hmm. other things, the Wayne brothers. Uh, and then they did their show. Uh, so uh, uh, she said, Hey, out of all those cards, I sent out probably 150 cards. Hey, I'm going to be in LA. Would love to meet with you. Da-da-da. One response. It was Monica Swan. And she said, hey, come in. I'd like to meet with you. So we met. I think we talked for two and a half hours. Just mm-hmm. talk. Just hanging out. Just like what we're doing right now. And I wound up booking Sister Sister, I think, a week later. Mm-hmm. No agent. No representation. Just Monica Swan, a casting director. The Lord had his hand on this whole thing. And yeah. I, I had no clue it was working like that. Um, did the show. Then wound up doing uh, In the House. Then wound mm-hmm. up uh, doing uh, a Chicago something. Chicago Hope. Mm-hmm. And then just from there on, just continued to work and um just, you know, putting the axe to grind and just working, 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 working. Then we had our, our four boys, mm-hmm. and um, you know, the rest is history. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> when you ask about what I've done, it's like that's how we got here. And that is hopefully inspiring enough to tell people uh never give up on your dreams. Never stop pursuing what it is that you're trying to do. Never, ever, ever stop training in what it is that you're you're pursuing. Mm-hmm. Uh, always get better. Get better than uh, you think you can get. Get better than the next person. It's not a competition, but get better and yeah. um, go for it. Uh, you know, within reason. Yeah. Don't don't compromise though. Yeah, I mean, de- definitely. Um, <clears throat> you know, never. You know, one of the things like. You know, I tell myself, tell my family as well, like, look, no matter how good you think you are, keep pushing yourself, keep learning. Like, regardless, it, I, I, I've i got some knucklehead nephews and nieces. <laughs> Don't we no, all? I, I, you know, I, I love them, but <laughs> knucklehead. I'm like, like oh, yeah, I'm, I just graduated high school. I got everything I need. <laughs> yeah. Shoot. And then life goes. <laughs> Like, but you know what? Be humble. <laughs> but encourage them. Encourage them, though, Kel, because, you know, they have to go through the same process that we went through. And think about the mistakes that we made. Had yeah. we not made them, we wouldn't be where we are today, probably. Right. Yeah. So encourage them, even in their mistakes, that, yeah, I can tell you what not to do. My dad always said, you'll never know what a man feels until you walk a mile in his moccasins. I never understood that, but it was very true. And I even... Now I find myself sounding like my dad telling my kid, <laughs> you know, you, you, you can't judge. You can't talk about what you would do, what you could do. What you, you're not in that situation. And even I could tell you what to do in this situation, but most, especially my sons be like, oh yeah, whatever dad, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you, they got to go through it. You know, they got to go through it on their own to, um, you know, either beat it, uh, struggle in it. Yeah. Cause you learn a lot through struggle. Yeah. Or, um, you know, just deal with it and come up with different solutions because in them going through it and you not helping them, you mm-hmm. can give them advice. I'm not saying, that, but you not helping them. It allows them to get through it, get stronger and then help the next person. Yeah, it definitely it teaches them. Um, and I feel like that's probably something I'm seeing that's kind of becoming a little bit of a lost art is you know, learning from situations and accountability. It, yes. It's just, it's something it's, I run into a lot of people and they're like, Oh, this happened. Cause this is this person's fault. And I can't do this because of this person. I'm like, yeah, point the finger. Yeah. What about you? What yeah. I always you say when you point fingers, it's like three pointing back at right? you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's very true, man. We live in a world that's uh, so uh, self-indulged right yeah. now. Um, and I just think there is there is a case for, uh, like you say, more accountability, but mm-hmm. also think that there should be more integrity, yeah. uh, you know, going around. Um, you know, there's 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 but it's not being taught. 
I mean, it's yeah. regardless of culture. It's just not being taught, yeah. um, you know, regardless of um, culture, regardless of creed. It's just not being taught in this world. Um, accountability, uh, integrity, mm-hmm. um, humility, yeah. courtesy, empathy, certain things just aren't being taught anymore. And so, you know, it, it's our job, uh, those of us who understand it and its power to mm-hmm. at least uh, demonstrate it and speak on it. So. Yeah. You know, that's what we got to do. That's what you got to do to your, your your nieces and nephews now. <laughs> yeah, I know it's it's a task, but it's all right. It ain't too heavy. You good? No, I mean, I I I get a phone call or a text or a video message like, Uncle Kel, can you do this for me? And and I, I see you you got this this and this, and I'm like, well, son, I worked hard to to get to where I am. Right, right. Like, oh, so you so yeah, you worked hard, so I don't have to. No. Oh, brother, they actually know. said that. Yeah. Like, no, nah, bro, they don't work that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's when you go, sit down, son, let me talk to you. <laughs> let me have a word with you. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me talk to you. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. It's, it's, but yeah, it's, man, so that's that's me in a nutshell. Uh, very, very abbreviated, um, you know, storyline on, on the business end of mm-hmm. it. But uh, as far as as far as my work it's all it's all on on uh, most of it is on uh imdb i don't know who monitors that thing but they they got a lot of it they actually have <laughs> some folks the, a man by the name of john eric bentley who was a writer back in the day mm-hmm. white guy they have mm-hmm. that on mine i'm like i didn't do that i was <laughs> three years old <laughs> you know it was like, but uh and i told them i wrote them i said that's not me you know, there's a big old picture of me, and then you see this movie called So Fine, and it's mm-hmm. about a movie with some jeans with the booty cut out, and it's supposed to be a trend. <laughs> I'm like, that's not me. I'm not in. That's I was a baby. So, <laughs> but it's all good, you know. Well, I mean, when you look at uh, you know, looking at your IMDb, man, your your career, you've done so much, and it's it's impossible to to try and keep up with everything you've done, and you know, I I've um. You know, your work kind of reminds me of my other friend um, that's in uh, in, in L. A. as well, uh, Gerald, uh, pro- who he voices uh, Bison in, in Street Fighter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Gerald, Gerald Rivers, real good friend of mine, real good friend. I, good. I actually got to go to L. A. last year for uh, the E. Three gaming convention. And- I was there, man. Man. <laughs> I didn't know you back then. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody did. No, I was there with my son Noah, and he got more of a kick out of it than I did. But yeah, I was there. Yeah, it, it, it was a trip, like walking around that convention. I'm like, man, that's that's a whole lot going on. And yeah, and I got a I got a call from uh from Gerald. He's like, he said, Mikhail, how long are you gonna be out here? I'm like, I'm out here for four days. He's like. You oh. want some good? You want some good cooking? Some good food? I was like, yeah. He's like, come, come on over to my house. I was like, oh, cool. I, I'm, I'm like, how far is that? Because <laughs> I got, I'm like, I got my, I got my hotel, uh, LAX, <laughs> right? We, you know, to the convention supposed to be 15 minutes. And nah, <laughs> nah, not, not taking in, not taking in consideration the traffic. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's LA, baby. It's a trip, man. It's. Ooh. How, how do you get used to that? Um. You just do, you know, it's, it's a city where, you know, if you've got a car, you're blessed. You can get to where you need to get to mm-hmm. if you got money to get gas, <laughs> but, yeah. but, um, it's just, it's just like that. It's one of the most spread out cities or states that I've ever seen. Um, and I've been, I've been to some states, bro, and lived in several, but it's just, it's spread out. Our downtown is not, not like a normal downtown. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's starting to come, you know, mm-hmm. but it's 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 different. It's it's a spread out place. And you you learn to get to where you got to get to. Now there's a train system, you know, there's a great bus system. Oh, my gosh. It's mm-hmm. just really good. Even the train system is good. But it it's just spread out. You got to get used to it. But you're right. If you were at LAX and you were going to the convention center for E3, that's a haul. You had to yeah. rent a car. Yeah, you know. that, that was uh we we took Uber and oh there you go that's that's another that way to was hour yeah it yeah it's this at least you weren't driving it <laughs> <laughs> right but yeah it's it's spread out you know it's uh they're long 
there's a lot of traffic, a lot of people here. You know, yeah. that's why there's a lot of people. You think about it, L.A., Chicago, um, New York, mm-hmm. Miami, uh, Miami, Atlanta now. Uh, starting yeah. to come, and then yeah. parts of Dallas. You know, Dallas is becoming pretty big. Mm-hmm. So you think about the number of people that are in these places. It's a lot, bro. It's a yeah. lot. But yeah, E three was a big deal, and I just got back from um, not just, but I got back from PAX this year, PAX East. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, and and some of the exhibitors didn't even show up, and it was a lot of people. It was really cool to watch that. But I was even, I was more impressed by the independent gamers. The independent games that are out there right now, they had mm-hmm. like rows and sections. Uh, it was just like, oh my gosh, look at all these up and coming gamers doing their thing. Right. So that was a lot of people. Isn't it crazy? Like you look back, you know, when <clears throat> gaming was coming up when you and I were younger to worry. Atari. Now, you know, like, yeah, Atari, ColecoVision. The first you know, PlayStation. Right? Like, <laughs> you, you look at it and it's like, you never would have thought back then how huge that industry was going to blow up. I did. I was an only child, bro. So I was like, this is great. If someone can come up with something, oh, it, man, this is great. If someone can come up with something, ooh, you know, so it <laughs> went from Pong, you know, to yep. Atari, and then ColecoVision, and Television, yep. ColecoVision, and then you're, you're dealing with, um, um, uh nintendo Mm -hmm. and then nintendo 64 Mm -hmm. and and i'm you know i'm skipping stuff i mean there was man bro they had stuff that was just like it would keep your interest forever because i was an only child too Mm -hmm. and and a latchkey kid so i would look forward to come home from school (laughs) and get on my little game because uh mom and dad were still at work so i'd go Mm -hmm. and buy my little 75 cents french fries from leon's (laughs) barbecue you know in chicago and go upstairs, didn't do no homework yet. I was like, I gotta eat my my french fries with my barbecue sauce and play my game first. Turn over Space Invaders. Ooh, look at that, I turned the numbers over because they didn't, you know, the numbers didn't go, yep. they would stop. And, yep. then, and then by the time I looked up, mom was almost on her way home. I was like, oh, I finished my fries, I turned it over. I better look like I'm doing some homework. So I did all my homework, <laughs> like I said. But then sports, it just the whole different level of, understanding how to get your homework done and not being able to play the video game anymore. Yeah. So, but yeah, man, back in the day, no one would think it'd blow up like this. My son, Maxwell, mm-hmm. is one of the smart. He's the smartest person in this home. He has been um, refurbishing and fixing all these gaming systems, all these phones, all these different things. He was like, hey, dad, I want you to check out this thing called Oculus Rift. I'm like, what is that? He's like, it's a virtual reality game. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, let's go. And he's like, no, no, it's in my room. <laughs> I'm like, what? He's like, let me move some things. <laughs> so he got his clothes up off the floor and said, hey, mm-hmm. we're going to play this thing. I'm like, what? He's like, put this headset on. I'm like, okay, and put these in your hand. And he walked me through the tutorial, and it literally was like, oh, my gosh. You can have virtual reality in your crib? And then he put me in this game, and he said, all right, you're going to be in a bar scene. I don't know the name of the game. You're in a bar, mm-hmm. and you got to fight. So I was like, what? And they came on. I'm like, hey, what's that big dude coming at me? And, you know, I'm punching. And all of a sudden, he's like, wait, 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 wait. And I accidentally hit him. And I'm like, Max, what? what ha- oh, my gosh. He's like, I told you to wait. I said, I couldn't hear you. The dudes in the bar were screaming. And, <laughs> and um, he was like, man, it's a trip, huh, Dad? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, are you bleeding? <laughs> It was just crazy, man. So, so, so I'm like, I won't play that game anymore with my son around because I'm like, I accidentally reached out and popped him. Mm-hmm. And, um, but the fact that he had this game in his room and it looked so real, mm-hmm. and now he's like, yeah, I got a new game called uh, what is it? Uh, Walking Dead. You can come in and play it. I'm like, I'm not playing the other game in the room if you're gonna be in there because I love you and I don't want to hit you. <laughs> and if it's Walking Dead and I know it's scary, I'm not playing it. <laughs> you know. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's a trip where it's come, bro. Kel, it's yeah. come a long way. It's it's you know, you, especially you grew up looking at stuff like Tron and whatnot, to think mm, which of, I loved. You know, oh, to, to, you get to be in a video game, right? <laughs> you know, it's like to to think like we went from the little, you know, the little pixels on Atari and ColecoVision to now we got characters that look real in real life. I'm like, bro. 
I was playing Final <laughs> Fantasy mm-hmm. and someone laughed at me. Who was it? I think one of my sons laughed at me. Mm-hmm. I was like, what's so funny? They're like, you're not moving. And I said, oh, I was just looking at the environment and the drawing, mm-hmm. the rendering and how it was moving and the hair, different things were moving. And then yeah. the music behind it. I'm like, this is one of the most beautiful video games that I've ever seen in my life and ever heard in my life. And I'm, I'm like, I get to be a part of this. And I just got caught up in it. And they just fell out laughing because they're like, Dad, you're not moving. I'm like, I'm sorry. It's just if i'm humbled by this it's just a beautiful game yeah i mean and and just you know you look at what we 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 saw the evolution of gaming from where it is to now so like for us it's like wow yeah you know yeah (laughs) literally dude you got everything you have in details the the dust the rocks you know the details in the hair i'm like yes literally (laughs) like where am i who did this right right Oh, it's easy. You can just no. It's not. This is a miracle. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, oh, the creators are, and they're just getting better. Yeah. You know, and it like, you know, when you look at games, just straight CPU games, not even console games. Mm-hmm. Some of the stuff they're doing is so innovative. Oh, mm-hmm. bro, just the coding that people are doing. My son Maxwell, he's making a game right now. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, just turn-based games and all these different t- point and click games and even the games that i play i because i love these games i think it's big fish mm-hmm. um does these games where you have to find the hidden objects and and you would think oh this is great we'll find the the the, the game you'll play a game it's like which which side can you spot the differences and stuff like that mm-hmm. i like those kind of games because they they you know build your mind and everything and memory mm-hmm. and, but now they have these games big fish does them and you don't just find the hidden objects. There's a storyline behind it. Mm-hmm. And it's a through line. And a good. some of them are very, very good. And it's like, oh, and the music behind some of them is really good. It's like, oh, my gosh, this is a point and click game. And I have been playing for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I discovered a whole lot during this quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, it's just amazing what people are doing, you know. Yeah. And, and you look at the amount, you know, and it's one thing like with this show, I, I try to, to bring a lot of awareness to people who are not only into games, but, you know, movies and whatnot and more. There are so many people behind these projects. Yes. So many teams like for uh, for Resident Evil three, you know, when they were in the process of starting that up, they kept coming out here to Hawaii. I worked with Capcom Japan. I worked cool. with uh, Ruben Langdon, who does. Dante from Double Me Cry and, and oh, I just Street got Fighter. five. I just got started five. Ooh, how you hooked. liking it? Hooked, <laughs> hooked. That and I just started Yakuza. I need to really stop starting games at the same time. Hook. <laughs> Haven't even finished Red Dead Redemption. Haven't even finished Spider Man. Haven't even right. finished, just so many. Just hooked. I'm just hooked. And it, it's just it's crazy. Like getting to work with like the audio team, and the, the visual team, and the voice acting cast. Like yeah, so many. Like when I, you know, it, on top of you know when I do the reviews for stuff, like I get comments from people saying, "Oh, this game is lazy. Oh, they didn't put any effort." I'm like, "Are you serious? Like, can right. can I virtually reach through the screen and pimp slap you? Yeah, <laughs> like, come, like come on now. No, you have no clue how much went into this. None. Yeah, none. especially for the voice actors. Like for you guys, how many times you got to redo lines? And oh yeah, like, okay, that's good. Add yeah. this little bit to it, like <laughs> right. Or you know what? That didn't sound right. I didn't like that. I, or that wasn't the character. Let me. You know, so many different little details that we have to pay attention to, and depending on whether you're doing a, a game where you're the mocap artist, so mm-hmm. you know what you've done and what you've said in it, or depending on you, or your voice has to match what's already been done. Mm-hmm. Those are the, you, there's so many details that go into it that most people don't um, understand. I look at some of the comments of you know uh, people what people post on social media, and I always get get a kick out of it. I I can never take it personally when it's mm-hmm. like you know offensive because they just don't know you know. And people are like, yeah, you should have, and I they need to, and I can't believe Square Enix, and I didn't. And it's like you all have no clue 
what goes on behind this. You guys are just the consumers right now going yeah. gimme, 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 and not understanding the process that this takes or the length of time that this mm-hmm. takes. So just appreciate the fact that someone is making a game that you'll enjoy, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Uh, if you give it time and if you just stop being negative. But I've also found, especially raising boys, mm-hmm. that social media is the breeding place for people who talk smack who would never talk smack in real life. Oh, <laughs> face to they're, face. No, not, They're not about that life. <laughs> no, it is what it is. Like I said, my folks are from the South, but I grew up in Chicago. So it's a whole mm-hmm. different mindset of, oh, Oh, and then I was an athlete, so it's like, oh, you're just saying that because you got to, oh, you're scared lined up against me. I get it. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's just like, oh, it's whatever. I, it, you I, you I, just, you know, live and learn. I, I've had some run-ins, you know, some situations with different people that have said some things online, and when I see them, they're like, oh, oh, uh, I, I didn't mean it like that. I'm like, you sure? Cause you, no, you hit, the first you... thing they tell you, Cal, the first thing they tell <laughs> I really love your show. Right? right? Right, and then they do that, and you go. You say what? What did you tell them? I was like, "You sure? Because you know, you had all you had the caps lock on, and <laughs> you, you were typing that keyboard pretty hard there. Pretty you hard were there, banging you it sure? out. <laughs> yeah, you make me sick, and I can't believe you. <laughs> you from Hawaii, and I don't. <laughs> and then you see, it was like, "Oh hi, <laughs> can I have your autograph, please?" See, I, I, I'm telling you, like this, the social media age, man. Like it's different. It's, but that's that, you know. That's where I tell you some, some of the selfish <laughs> stuff is bread, and you know, some of the negativity, yeah. and you know, it's kind of like, oh, you just did that because you thought it was cool to be. I saw a great post. A friend of mine, Kaylee, wrote. Uh, I think it was Kaylee. She wrote something like, um, "Oh no, it was Amber. It was Amber. She, mm. I love that woman." She's great people. She, you should meet her. She's a podcaster too. <clears throat> I'll try to send you her information. But she wrote okay. something like it was. Uh, it's not. It's not cool. I, I'm butchering this, but uh, <laughs> it's not cool to talk smack. What did she say? Uh, it's. It's not always. It, just because you talk smack doesn't make you popular. Yeah, <laughs> basically. And I was like, that's a really good. <laughs> That's true. People <laughs> think that controversy brings uh, followers or interest or um, whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, you don't have to be a shock jock to get attention. And so that's what I'm fine is like, gimme, 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 me, 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 I, I, mm-hmm. I, my, my, my. I, I'm, I've, I've very, I don't like hanging out with folks like that. That's just me, yeah. though. No, I, I'm the same way, man. I, I, um, it's funny. Everyone wants to be Howard Stern in a way. They they want right? that, that controversial attention. And it's like, the thing is, like, I, I, I see people like striving for that. I'm like, you do realize that if you start this, you're going to have to keep that up. Yeah. That's a lot of negative energy. And I, I'm just, I don't know if I'm sensitive in, to energy or not, but like, if I'm around a person, not even that long, I can pick up that vibe. Like, oh, yeah. You can no. hear it. The first <laughs> thing you hear is me, my, I. Yep. And when you hear that, you kind of go, okay, I, I mm. got a sense of who I'm talking to and I'm dealing with right now. Uh, and then you, you know, I always say actions speak louder than words and mm-hmm. the, the, the eyes are the windows to the soul. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you, can get, if you can get enough discernment to figure out what's going on with people, then you can figure them out. But, you know, you don't. You know, I, don't, I try not to put people in a box and I try to give them the benefit of the doubt, but I also try to figure out how to steer the conversation and make it more positive than mm-hmm. where it could go. Uh, so that's just, you know, practice, practice and patience. Oh, my God. So much patience. Yeah. But I got four boys. So I got a lot. Of time <laughs> <practice>. <laughs> my wife and I both, we just we practice. <laughs> Uh, you know, sp- speaking about like some of the stuff I, I've, uh, you know, read like the criticism, like for like Final Fantasy VII, I've heard some people are saying like, "Oh, it's not the full game," or, or some people critique like the, the voice cast, and I'm, I, I find it interesting because I'm like, don't you, if you want more, wouldn't you want to support it? Just, just a little thought. 
there there's a uh i won't name him, but there's a, a content creator not it doesn't have that many more well he's probably got like 20 or so thousand more subs than me but he kind of ruined it for us smaller folks just because he got a copy of the game oh and post it yeah so a bunch of leaks yes not so square was very specific very specific you can't show or talk about this this and this like keep mm-hmm. it to the first maybe hour or two of the game and he not only that he bashed the game bashed the voice act he made a comment okay i it, this ain't to stir some but i i think you you get a kick out of it because i i got a good read of you so he 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 bashed the voicing of Seth Roth, Cloud, and you. And and for you, he's like, well, Barrett sounds like a white guy trying to pretend. To oh, be I black. heard that. That he's, that was before. <laughs> that was before it came out, though, right? Yeah, yeah. I saw, I, and he it has started this huge rumor that Barrett was not going to be voiced by a black actor. Yeah, and everybody's like, oh, Barrett's white. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. And I thought that was the funniest thing. Is he black or white? He's white. He's oh, that's hilarious. Eat. That's hilarious. But, uh, you know, uh, I, I saw that and it made me laugh so hard. I'm like, uh, I think I'm black. Uh, wait a minute. Maybe I'm not. If, he's, if he says I'm not black, maybe I'm not. <laughs> I fell out. I had a whole, my friends and I just did a whole to do about it. I thought that was hilarious. I don't know who he is. Uh, even to this day, I don't know. I didn't even know he was, what did you say, a content? Yeah, he, he he does YouTube videos. Yeah, yeah, I, and yeah. uh, yeah, I heard him say that, and and you know that was when it first was coming out, and and personally, he had no clue because there were only snippets of things mm-hmm. that were being released, and so I thought I found that hilarious, and then people who knew me were like, "Hey, man, they said that you you were white," and I'm like, <laughs> "Oh, that's hilarious," and then I went back to back in the day when I um, you know. Because because my mom mm-hmm. taught me how to read uh, at a very young age, I was pretty articulate as an only child in the hood in Chicago. So I remember my friends coming up to me, "Man, you you you're so you're so proper." <laughs> that was the <laughs> word. You're so proper. And I thought it was funny when I looked. I'm like, "Well, mom, what does proper mean?" She was like, "Well, you know, you speak well. It's derived from what people say in England." My mom was a serious educator. Mm-hmm. You know, proper. It's, it's proper. And so, <laughs> and so and so I fell out laughing because my friends like John Brown and Marshall Fortson and all these kids growing up, Irving, all my boys growing up, Mark Gaiman. Yeah, you talk proper, but you, you're still a brother. And they didn't use right. the term brother. <laughs> right. But, you right. Know, right. But it was like, it was, that was so funny to me. So then I saw this, that, you know, the voice of Barron is the white guy trying to sound black. And it was like, oh, this is one of those dudes who – on on and fourth fourth and ten, when you line up against him, because I was a receiver, <laughs> he's he's got to say something <laughs> because he wants to distract you because he knows he's about to get run the hell over. <laughs> right. I went, and I went, oh oh yeah, that's this guy. He's just talking smack and doesn't know what he's talking about. So I got a kick out of it, man. I thought that was funny. I wasn't offended by that one. That one made me laugh. I'm like, oh yeah, it's, he thinks. A white guy thinks a white guy is imitating a black guy. Hmm. Right? But don't get me wrong. Now, look, in his defense, how many shows, Yeah. let's be honest, Okay. Um, both animated, mm-hmm. anime, as mm-hmm. well as um, cartoon shows, is there a black character who's being voiced by someone who's not of the same culture? I mean, you think about it. Yeah. I think uh, South was South Park. Mm-hmm. Isaac Hayes was doing Chef, which everybody was like, oh, this is great. Oh, my gosh, this is so great. He's a black man. This is a real black man doing a black, you know, in the yeah. black culture. We were like, this is awesome. Because usually white folks mm-hmm. or whoever the producers are for certain shows or even Japanese anime, they think that if I sound like this, then I'm being black. And it's like, no, you're doing a caricature. Mm-hmm. You, you, this is what you think black folks sound like. You don't yeah. know the experience. You haven't lived that life. You, mm-hmm. you, you don't. You're just trying to make it sound like what you think it should sound like. And usually, it's pretty negative. 
Yeah. And it's pretty much a um a worldview or a cultural view of another culture that has demonstrative been mm-hmm. demonstrative to their their image. So I mean, I'll never forget this is in, and I'm gonna lead up to what I'm talking about. I'll never forget time, man. <laughs> going to uh Mexico. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had to finish up my language requirement in Mexico uh, in order to get my degree, my undergrad degree. And I remember walking through Los Ocolo and I saw the, the market, mm-hmm. the downtown area, and I saw the newsstand. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, look at all these things that are happening in the world. This is what's going on. And I was there during the time, I think, when the whole OJ thing was going on, which was kind of frightening because I was one of the only black folks in Cuenavaca at the mm-hmm. time. And um, I saw these comic books. And. I'm a comic book dude. So I went straight to the comic books. I'm like, whoa. And it had Lil Sambo. Mm -hmm. It had Mammy. It had Ain't Your Mama. It had all these different images. And some of them even had the titles. It was in the titles of all these negative black stereotypes Mm -hmm. that the world has created, that America has created, that the world has created. You know, the images of a black person with big lips or funny hair or just stupid Mm -hmm. stuff. And I'm going, who's to blame for this, though? So now that culture thinks that everybody is like that or everybody sounds a certain way. And now it's become a mockery and it's no longer a true life example of how that culture should be represented. So going into this uh, to do Final Fantasy, I wanted to make sure that my culture, our culture, Mm. was not being... um, made a fool of a mockery of uh, that barrett wasn't some big black brute Mm -hmm. that he wasn't someone who sounded ignorant that he Mm -hmm. wasn't someone who was one-dimensional he's so many things he's a freedom fighter he is uh, a father who Mm -hmm. adopted his friend's daughter because of a Mm -hmm. situation that happened he is a leader he's so many different things and i wanted to make sure that all those different levels of emotion all those different things were played the right way because if you're not going to be true to the character a black man in this situation in this particular time in midgar then i wouldn't be able to do it justice mm-hmm. so for someone to come and say all that with only hearing little snippets or not understanding it or or not understanding the process of having to do the voice work with how it was presented to us, uh, the writing, all the different things. I wanted to make sure that we got it right. So for someone to come in and say whatever they're going to say, they're going to say whatever they want to say. Everyone has their opinions. Yeah. You know, they're like buttholes. Everyone has one and they all stink. No, (laughs) anyway. (laughs) um, But um, (laughs) my my father-in-law used to say that. It cracked me up. But not everyone. (laughs) Some opinions are very good and they're actually... They're actually, you know, great for uh, constructive criticism. So you can take yeah. notes on it. But, you know, for someone to give their opinion and be so negative on what they think mm-hmm. uh, is going on it, it, without any kind of proof or without any kind of backing or without any kind of anything behind it, mm-hmm. it's ridiculous to me. So that that's my answer to all that. <laughs> no, I mean, I and, and, you know, well said. A lot, lot more professional about it than I would have been. But oh, no, I've no. learned, man. You can't go up there. <laughs> what you say? You know what? what? Give me his hand. I'm going to call him right now. I'm going to go. You know, I'm not going to. You know, it's not, Where you at? It's not me, worth me, it. Meet me on the it's, corner of South and Third. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Put on a helmet. Line up. <laughs> no, it's, the thing is, uh, you know, Cal, like I said, people are going to say what they want to say, and everyone is entitled to their opinions. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just that. I've learned that a lot of people really think that they're going to get famous off of talking smack. And yeah. I've seen people, I've literally seen people hit me. I dare you hit me. And it's like, Oh, you're trying to get paid. So you, you want somebody to sue you. you know, it's just the world. Mm-hmm. We, we live in a world that's all about opportunity. And, um, or there's a lot of people who, who, who are opportunists, I should say, not mm-hmm. everybody is, but there's a lot of opportunists in the world and they'll do whatever they can for their, five seconds of fame whatever it may be and certain things just aren't worth it if you let stuff roll off you like you know a duck in water and it's 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 the the crazy thing too you got especially with i i know it's this has happened with our generation as well but like (laughs) seeing so many of the younger generation coming up doing anything to get you know attention attention clout it's scary it is 
That's why I say don't compromise, yeah. especially if you're going to try to do something in life that you love mm -hmm. and can be a means of a profession for you. Don't compromise. I've seen yeah. too many people in my profession um, compromise. Uh, they they either give up their their bodies, they give up their rights, they give up their livelihood to satisfy someone what someone wants or how someone perceives them and it's like you, you just you can't you can't compromise you can't sell your soul yeah you know you just can't it's not worth it which just goes back to what we were saying you gotta have integrity definitely gotta have character yeah and have self-accountability and yes i know it's i know it's you know it's a different time and, and can be trying sometimes but you got to really think about who do you want to be what kind of true what kind of you know role do, or role model do you want to it well and sometimes a lot of people don't realize that we're role models to somebody mm -hmm. regardless someone's so, looking at you someone's looking up at you yeah. up to you yeah it's true very true i learned that at a very young age as a kid um coming up not having much uh, there's always someone else who doesn't have even what you have and mm -hmm. i used to be that that kid in the hood that would go and make sure that the younger kids were cool and hey you guys fine there you go no one wants to play with us today all right well, let's play some tag let's play some hide and seek let's mm -hmm. go shoot some hoops you know it was just good and it was also because i was an only child and i wanted a younger brother or i wanted an older brother or sister and um i'll just never forget just you know my mom and dad taught me how to pay it forward at a very young age mm -hmm. uh, and told me how to be thankful uh, in all things and, and thankful in, for what we had. And we were, you know, people who were less fortunate than we were in the situations that I was in. I just wanted to make sure that they were okay. I just want mm -hmm. to see people happy. Yeah. And, you know, and just, you know, coming up, I, I know for myself, like coming up from the hood to <clears throat> where I'm at now, you know, I have such a, air of appreciation for what I have. And mm -hmm. it's like, you know, when I, when I do go back to Memphis or I do meet other folks there and they're like, man, I wish I could do this. Anytime I hear people say, I wish I could do this. I'm like, what's stopping you? It's, you know, what, what is, what, how, how do we formulate something? Like what, what are, what are some steps we can take to get you to where you want to be? Right. And how can lot, I help? Yeah. You know, and a lot of people really think that, Oh, it's impossible. I'm like, the only impossibility is your own mindset, brother. Like, come, come so on. True. So true. You know? <laughs> so true. What's stopping you is usually what's been between your ears. Yeah. And then a lot of times what's right here in your heart, you know? Um, yeah. But once again, a lot of people don't have folks to encourage them to try things or a lot of people don't feel like they can get out of the environment that they're in and, I'm here to tell you that there there is a way to yeah. go about doing it. Um, and I, I couldn't do half the things that I do, honestly, if it wasn't for prayer. Um, yeah. My faith in the Lord is what allows me to be able to do and accomplish a lot of the things that I, I go for um, and then learn for the things that I don't accomplish. Uh, but the simple fact that, you know, I know my relationship with with the Lord is um, a driving force and gives me the confidence and gives me the security and what I need to do and, and how to go for it. You know, I rely heavily on prayer, heavily yeah. on prayer. My, my dad always said, um, you know, prayer changes things. And, and I've, I've seen that happen. Yeah. It, it is, it's, it's, it helps, you know, especially going through times like this, you know, yeah. to, to, you know, you can pray and, you know, just have that. This too shall pass. Yeah. And I know a lot of people have this mentality, no, it's going to get worse. It's going to get it. I'm like, no, no, this too shall pass. And you, there's a silver lining in almost everything. You know, True. And I know we, we were talking about this before, you know, we started the soul show and honestly, I know a lot of people are upset, angry that, oh, I got to stay home. Oh, I got to do this. I'm like, for a lot of them, I'm like, look, what is it you have wanted to do, but you <laughs> didn't have the time for? Right. Right. <laughs> right. Like, oh, there, man. <laughs> there's about to be so many self-made billionaires that come out of this. 
Yeah. So many people that come out with innovative projects that never were able to get done or didn't have time to do that they're going to be able to do, or so many mm-hmm. inventions that come out of this. Um, I really do believe there's going to be a lot of entrepreneurs that are birthed from this crisis. I had a person tell me, <clears throat> a 90-year-old guy who was a survivor of you know the Nazi prison camps, mm-hmm. said to them, hmm. It's tough situations we're living in. But yeah. if I can get through what I got through and survive, we're going to be all right. Yeah, And that hit me so hard. <laughs> this <laughs> dude was in uh, Auschwitz and he survived and said, if I can survive that, I'll be fine here. And he's much older. Yeah. So I'll be fine through this. And um, that hit me and it put things into perspective and it and it honestly made me go, let me stop trying to rationalize things and just do what I know to be is right. Let me stay mm-hmm. in this house, protect my family, make sure that they stay in the house. Cause my boys are restless right now. They want to, we should, we, can we just go for a drive? I have no problem with you going for a drive, but just don't get out and go hang out in places. Okay. Okay. You know, so there's different things that, you know, I was like, okay, well, let's all go on a drive. Let's go to the, to the beach. We're going mm-hmm. to the beach. Yes, we're going to drive PCH and we're just going to look at the sunset. Okay, okay, okay. So there's ways to do this, but you got to exercise wisdom during these times. Mm-hmm. You know, because my biggest thing is, yeah, there's a lot of things that I want to do right now, but there's a whole lot of things that I want to do in the future. And doing something right now will compromise my life to be able to not do it in the future if I do something stupid right now. So that's where my head is with it. And that's what I try to tell my my boys. I want to see you around. I want to be here to see your grandchildren. You know, so you know, you know when, you, I, when you put it in a different perspective, it it changes the mindsets. Yeah, definitely. And it's like you know, when you everything that you do now, you know, try to make sure you're, the steps that you take now, the, the actions you do now, make sure they line up to something down the road. That and, will allow you a f- future. Yeah. You know what I mean? That will allow you to have a future and to be healthy and to not cut your future short. Even uh, yeah. that's, that's my mindset. And, you know, I, I want to definitely talk about more stuff with you, man. How, how much time we got with you? Do we, we, oh, I told you we got to do this again. <laughs> I'm, I just looked, you got the little live thing up there. I can see how long we've been talking for an hour. I love it. It's like being in the living room, chill, chilling and kicking back. So, you know, um, we got we got to we, just just do another because I know we really we covered a lot of personal stuff. Yeah, you know, um, I know we haven't covered a, a whole lot in uh, the game. We've covered a lot of things in the game, um, but yeah, we can do this again, man. This is fun. I like hanging out, hanging out with Kale and the right, Casanova right? podcast. Right? How, 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 how much? Uh, how much more time you got? Well, it's not like we got a lot to talk about. How about what? Wh- how much time do you need? And then let's figure it out from there. Uh, sir, sir, I, I do this for a living, so I, I'm here all day. How much time I, you got? Well, I got to <laughs> see the family is starting. What is it? It's 11 o'clock here. The family is probably starting to come out of their rooms okay. right now. And they're going. Uh, they're, I'm sure my wife is is like hanging out and cooking breakfast. and But I haven't been able to hang out with her today. And okay. I haven't been able to uh, get a workout in. That's the one thing I've I've decided I'm gonna change during this okay. time is I'm gonna work out and get back to you know keeping my body healthier and stronger. Okay. Um, and so I, and I, I want to walk the I, I walk with my wife. We get to pray mm-hmm. and walk at the same time, and we get to catch up on hey what's going on. We get to walk a little bit, not too far from the house. Mm-hmm. And um, you know I just gotta you know I got things I gotta get done. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, is but it, you know, I'll get you want five more minutes? Is that enough uh, time? I, I, had, we... no, I had like three more questions. Oh, and, let's let's knock it, out the questions. We, we can roll with it. And then uh, we'll reschedule for another time to come back on if it's okay with you. D- do <laughs> I have you back on, man. I'm loving this energy. Right. I'm loving okay. this energy. Okay. Okay. Well, let's um, do the three questions. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna hop uh, before so I, I want to give a special shout out to to Studio Nintendo and Alvin on Smith and none other than Talos for the donations and super chats. I appreciate it. It really helps keeping the show going. Thank y'all. Uh, I appreciate y'all for that. 
Um, so, so the questions, you know, when you got, how did it feel when you got selected for the role of Barrett in Final Fantasy VII Remake? Like, was that surreal for you or? How Felt like you? a kid on Christmas morning who got everything <laughs> that he asked for. Literally, I jumped up, danced, did circles. My wife was like, calm down, calm down. I'm like, you don't understand. This is a game that I grew up playing. This was the first RPG that had a black character in it that I could yeah. relate to. And he lived. He didn't <laughs> he didn't die. <laughs> you know, he was a leader. And, you know, um, so I was beyond thrilled. Just I didn't know how big at the time. Mm. I still, um, a buddy of mine, Alex Main, who runs KupaCon conventions, which I, if you ever get a chance to go, you got to, oh my gosh, best crowd in the world uh, at <laughs> conventions. But um, uh, he, uh, he told me, John, you have no clue. You have no idea. You have no clue how big this is. Yeah. And I'm like, well, every time I see him, I go, you're right. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. I just... I never realized that the world loved this game like this, like like mm-hmm. I did in my little apartment in Chicago. You know, I mean, you know, not in Chicago, but my, <laughs> my, my, my little little apartment when I got married to Michelle. It's like, this is a great game. You know, <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> oh, finish it in a day. You know, I never realized it was gonna be. Uh, I never realized it was gonna be this big, and it's it's overwhelmingly humbling. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm excited. I'm still excited about it. And uh, so I, I still am that little fanboy running around the house going, oh, my God, look at that. Just you and dunking basketball on Atari, mom. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, it's crazy because like my, my wife has been uh, she's been streaming the game. Uh, I think she's done like two or so streams and she's going to do another one today. And she's mm. like, Mr. Barrett, Mr. Barrett. I'm like, <laughs> why are you calling him Barrett? She's like, Mr. Barrett. I'm like, OK, <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. That's really cute. Uh, we were at a we were at a KupaCon in London, mm-hmm. and um, uh, this this group of three people they were sitting mm-hmm. on the side, and they're like, "Hey, we just wanted to come up and say, hey, we really love you, and we did it." I'm like, "All right, cool, thank you very much." She's like, "But we the one girl didn't come up, and she said, we have a friend, mm-hmm. and she's extremely shy, and she wants to say hi, but she just doesn't know how." And I'm like. Well, okay, just I'll, I'll go say hi to her. So I walk up, and she's such a she's a, reminds me. She totally reminds me of my niece Stella, and mm-hmm. she's just just this slight little beautiful girl. Just she, and she's just and she's crying, and I'm like, why are you crying? She's like, ah, oh, because I meet you, and I'm like, I've never been in that situation where someone mm-hmm. has cried, you know, you know, because of who I am, like, and I just. I, so I, I said, is it okay if I just hug you and make sure you're okay? Because she literally, I, she was trembling. And I'm like, it's, it's, I'm just John. It's me. And I, <laughs> and I held her and, and her friends were there. And I said, you guys, come on in. We hugged. All of us were hugging. And I said, are you okay? She's like, I'm fine. And then she went on to tell me the story. Barrett, growing up playing this, and she was young, mm-hmm. growing up playing this, my father introduced me to this game. And mm-hmm. Barrett is like my father. And so all of these relationships that he had with Marlene were like his relationship with me. Mm. And so to meet you was humbling because my, and I'm like, oh my gosh, whole different level of why are you crying? Mm-hmm. And I just reached out and I grabbed her again. I said, I'm sure your father would love to know that you love him that much and that you care for him that much. Please make sure you tell him that. Please mm-hmm. make sure that you know. And so it turned into a whole different healing process for mm-hmm. her. As as well as for me, because I had just lost my father two years prior to, less mm-hmm. than two years prior to. So, you know, it's stories like that that just make me go, oh, wow, this is way bigger than just the video games, just the character. Mm-hmm. The fact that, you know, I was blessed to be uh, chosen for the role. It's just mm-hmm. stories like that. They make the world go around for me, man. Yeah. And, um, you know, what was like the recording process like for you? Was it long sessions or was it short? Was it a round table? Um, our sessions were four hour sessions. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't remember how, how, uh, 
when we started now we it, there was a lot of sessions mm-hmm. a lot of sessions we got a lot done in our sessions though we I was very focused that unbelievably unbelievably talented directors uh, mm-hmm. audibly visually just unbelievable we had writers that were there um mm-hmm. the translators that were there um they were the sessions were intense but I was able to adjust to them because of my experience, I guess. Mm-hmm. But they were way far more intense than what I thought. I remember the first sessions, I had to listen to the Japanese do the lines in English to camera, mm-hmm. to, to picture. Because it had already been, you know, mm-hmm. um, mo- mo-capped. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, is that the facial expression? Or so you had to. There's so many different things going on in your head, where you have to match this. And, you, and so I'm going. This is this is this. My right <laughs> brain's thinking. My left brain's thinking. It was just it was intense. <laughs> and then, how do you make this line work with what's physically being being done? Because mm-hmm. it wasn't just <laughs> Barrett's running. <laughs> it was like the facial expression, and this is what was happening in the scene. And here's we got this going on, and they're doing this behind you, and you're giving. It was hard. Yeah. And so I went, wait a minute. So because the sessions were in uh, lumps, you know, when we, mm-hmm. this month we're doing it, next month we're off, this month we're doing it, this month we did this, you know, it was cool because you would always come back to where you were. I would always mm-hmm. get a reference. Our sound booth tech, Jay, was just incredible. I mean, we just had an unbelievable team here in America that mm-hmm. allowed us to get it done the right way, which all you had to do at one point as an actor was like, I'm going to show up and be this character. And, you know, it, so it was great. They, they made it very, uh, Rita as Skylark. She's who cast me. She, she, her team is unreal. And the mm-hmm. Square Enix team is just on point. So yeah. it was just, it was, it was great. It was intense, but it was great. And it, and it was a great lesson as an actor to mm-hmm. hone your skill, not just as a voiceover actor, but also as an actor period, you know? So yeah, it was, it was tough, but it was good. It was hard in the <laughs> beginning. And then after a while, it was like, okay, you just become the character. You know, you just know you're going into the session to speak like Barrett and what's, what's, what's happening today, mm-hmm. you know, but thank God for research of uh, the, the storyline that you don't know about mm-hmm. that you have to find out about your character, as well as the whole arc of final fantasy. Thank God for the, mindset to like my mom taught me to read <laughs> to, mm-hmm. to research and then um thank goodness for the um the ability to have played the game and been a fan way back when in 97 because mm-hmm. you you have an understanding of what you're doing better understanding mm-hmm. and and my last question for you before we go and greatly appreciate your time being here oh, with you us got today it, man it's you Cal. <laughs> So, so, um, what is something you would like to to leave the audience with before you before we wrap this up? Mm. Anything, anything. <laughs> um, not just because of the situation that we're living in right now, the current situation mm-hmm. with uh, the coronavirus, but in an everyday life, learn to appreciate life more. Mm-hmm. Learn to love the people around you more regardless of what your opinions may be of them Mm -hmm. and learn the importance and the, uh, I guess the, uh, the way joy Mm -hmm. can be given and taken and given again from the next person to the next person to the next person and just try to spread that as much as you possibly can. Because right now we as a people uh, are resilient and fighting things uh to survive Mm -hmm. and i think that we're going to get through this and all the while learn what it is that you have been assigned to learn Mm -hmm. during this time and um become a better person during this time not just for the benefit of you but for the benefit of everyone else definitely and i lied i actually got one final question for you (laughs) okay (laughs) Go ahead. Did you have fun? What, what, hanging with you? Yeah. Oh, my goodness, man. (laughs) If people would have heard the conversations that we had 
prior to coming on live, <laughs> you know what I mean? It would have been like, yo, it's, it's, I'm, yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> I literally, man, when when I feel like I'm talking to someone and they're in my living room or I'm in their living room kicking it, mm-hmm. I had a good time. I had a All good right. time. So I, I I can't wait to do it again, bro. See, I'm serious about that. I'm not yeah. just I'm not just saying I'm serious about that. We, we got to do it again. I, we, we we definitely gonna connect on this. And if thing. I come, if I you know when it's you got a place we, to stay when I we can <laughs> <laughs> when we can fly again. I, right? I don't know about you, man, but I just saw um, this these funny memes of someone said, this is why I don't fly. And mm-hmm. they showed this dude, you know, the, the screen where you can watch a movie. They showed yeah. somebody's foot doing pushing the buttons and dragging the, the movies. And I'm like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, flying, you know, like I'll be glad when we get back to flying. Wait a minute. <laughs> and, right. Uh, but you know, if I oh, ever wait. get back, if I ever get to if yeah, right? I'm like, if I ever get to Hawaii, you know, I'm I'm hanging. I'm hanging. We get to meet in person. Hey, well, you got a place to stay, man. Like anytime you come out here, hey. Appreciate it. Fun. Then we and, do a uh, podcast and get all them creative content people mad. Oh, right? they're not really black. <laughs> 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 but before, uh, before we go, the audience wants you to do a line from the game. If if you if you if you don't mind, it's up. To oh you. wait, wait. First of all, are people listening live right right now? Yeah. Do you have like a number uh, of people? Yeah, listening and tuning in. Uh, twenty five right now. Twenty five people. Hey, y'all. Yeah. Twenty five people. Much love. Thank you for tuning in to the Casanova podcast, hosted by Kale Casanova. Yeah. Um, I'm giving you, I'm, I'm doing your commercial, right? <laughs> <laughs> but thank y'all so much. But yeah, what, what line did they write something they want me to say, or is it um, something from the, and don't be like, yeah, what was your favorite line? There's a lot of favorite lines in this that's one. a lot. So I yeah. think, um, but I'm not calling anybody an MF because everybody is asking me to call them an MF. I don't understand that. It's, that's never been part of the game. No, no. Why are people, people are like, yeah, can you call me an MF? I'm like, what? No. <laughs> and then I was like, well, maybe they think that it's because of the Sam Jackson stuff that I've done. Oh, 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 oh. A Nick Fury. And I'm like, no, <laughs> uh, he doesn't call people MFers even as Nick Fury. So no. I don't know where that comes from. But anyway. I think it's uh, <laughs> so the line I see some folks want you to do is the that's a long, that's a long one. <laughs> Just got to type it. <laughs> it's like the pipes. This pipe's sole purpose is to suck this planet dry while you eat, while you sleep. Oh, you sleep. they want me to do. That's a <laughs> while long you eat, one. Why you? Yeah, that, that's the one they want me to do. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, give me, give me something shorter, because I don't. Have, unless you can type it, can you type it to me? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Is they, that where really, it says chat? They, yeah. But yeah, it's they, super long, huh? Oh, there yeah. it is. Ultra gamer. <laughs> <laughs> this pipe's sole purpose is to suck this planet dry while you eat, while you sleep, while you shoot. So. <laughs> that's when he's. That's when we're talking about the Mako. That's yep. when. I, yeah. Okay. But, and who is this Ultra Gamer? Yeah. Uh, I wish I could say hi to them. <laughs> All right, Ultra Gamer. This is for you. Uh, Cause Kale told me to. I'm too, I'm too, I'm too. <laughs> this pipe's sole purpose is to suck this planet dry while you eat. While you sleep, while you shit, it's his sucking up Mako. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> and, and, and with that being said, people, you can catch this episode of the Casanova Podcast and many more. We on every major podcast and outlet. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio. I, y'all see it. It's right there, right below our names. You know, I ain't got to say all that. <laughs> But it's it's there. We on every outlet and uh, all the dang links. Pandora, yes, iTunes, sir. YouTube. Yes, oh sir. my goodness! We, and we the the number one, literally number one podcast in Hawaii for three and a half years, going strong. There we and, go. Um, you know, links to our our amazing guest John Bentley, the iconic and legendary <laughs> John Bentley. His is all his information from his social media to his IMDb. All the links for that are in the description of this podcast. And with that being said, John, we got to do this again, man. I, we're sure. going to chop it up. Say just a couple, a couple minutes after we end this. And uh, with that being said, people, if y'all enjoyed it, hit the like button, 
Uh, we got Patreon if you want to support. And with that being said, this is John and I. We're signing out. We'll catch y'all. Deuces. On the next one. Much love. <laughs>